Hi, I'm Ben Hanewalt, Product Specialist here at Atlas Copco. And today, we're going to be talking about programming the PowerFocus 6000 Step Sync using Tools Talk 2. Let's take a look down in the software. All right, so now that we're down in the software, as you can see, I'm connected to the controller using Tools Talk 2. The first thing that you're going to notice is that the icon on the left side is going to be slightly different from a normal PowerFocus 6000. It's got a controller with these two little dashed lines next to it. That is the symbol for a step sync system. So let's move over to the right and take a look at some of the menus. First and foremost, we have our hardware configuration. So if I actually come in here and I hit extract, it'll actually pull our setup as it is right now. As we add tools to it, we can actually drag and drop those tools in and kind of attach them to each controller as we go through. And this is really just for building out the fixtured system and making sure that the entire system has every piece of hardware accounted for. This is a pretty important part, probably one of the first steps you're going to take when building a new step sync system. So from there to the right, we have our tightening programs. Uh, this is going to be very, very similar. We have other videos on how to create a tightening program, but this is going to be very similar to a uh, normal PowerFocus 6000 tightening program. There's nothing uh, too crazy in here, but one important thing to note is that the PowerFocus 6000 step sync does not have the ability to do reject management like a PF6 Flex system. So that would be a major differentiator between a PowerFocus 6000, a PF6 step sync, and then also the PF6 Flex. Next, we have our sync mode tables, and this is actually a, a very big difference. This is one of the major differences between the two systems. So you do not have mode tables in a normal PowerFocus 6000. But what we can do is we can actually come in here and build out our programs so that, for example, if a PLC is selecting program one, we know that we're going to run our tightening program on these two bolts. An important factor here as well is we cannot run different tightening programs on different spindles. So that's another difference between PF6 Flex and PF6 Step Sync. So as you see, if I make a change, it applies that change to both of the spindles on the Step Sync system. So next we have batch sequences. This is really the same as a PowerFocus 6000, so we're not really going to focus in on this too much. Our sources, this is going to be the same as a PF6000 as well. So it's going to look and feel the exact same as any other PowerFocus 6000. These would be used for if you're using batch sequences or tightening programs, selecting them from an external source. Our configurations are going to look very similar to a PowerFocus 6000 regular, but a couple of things I always like to talk about are the tool configuration. It's important to always create a tool configuration based on the tool type that you're going to be using. And really the only options here are cabled and cabled QST. And then we're always going to want to set this start source over to digital input so that we know that an external source is going to be starting the tool. From here, there's also our general virtual station configurations. And as you can see here, by default, the PowerFocus 6000 with Step Sync is going to always be or never be auto enabled. Basically, what this means is, is that we need to, if we want to run this without an external system giving us an enable signal, we're going to want to change that to always. So if it is saying that you're disabled, um, this is definitely a spot that I always check on a Step Sync system. This does not exist on a normal. PowerFocus 6000 system. This is going to show us our connected tools. Not a lot to do in this tab. Uh, the next tab we have is where we select our tasks. Again, this is going to be very similar uh, look and feel to a PowerFocus 6000, just a normal PowerFocus 6000. The main differences here is we are most likely are going to have some type of a field bus mapping or some type of an accessory connected since we need an external start source. So keep that in mind. We're probably going to end up coming in here and attaching this accessory um, like this so that we can get our, our start signals connected to the controller itself. 
And then moving down the line, there's nothing else really different between the Power Focus 6000 and the PF6 Step Sync. The rest of this is going to look almost identical. Um, field bus programming is going to be very simple and similar. The main difference, too, on the field bus tab is we do have the ability to send acyclic data. So keep that in mind. Um, that would be for multiple spindles, large amounts of data. That's where the acyclic data comes into play. I hope that you have found this video to be informative. If you do have any additional questions regarding how to program a PowerFocus 6000 step sync system, please feel free to reach out to an Atlas Copco representative and we can make sure to get you some answers. And thanks for watching.